All right, this is about a man that lost his manhood for being too nice in prison. All right, that's what this is about. This is about a man who lost his manhood for being too nice in prison. So sit back, enjoy the ride, because I think you're going to really enjoy this one. All right, prison story. You know what it is. Unique Maker Audio, man. This is about a man that lost his manhood in prison. So sit back and enjoy the ride because I think you're going to enjoy this. Okay? Check. Uh, it's a dude named Billy. All right? Billy. I met Billy, you know, along my travels, you know, out west. He was from somewhere in the Midwest. You know, in the Midwest, they like to rob banks and things like that. So Billy went on a bank robbing spree. Billy robbed three banks in one day. You know what I mean? Three banks in one day. He got away with it. He was a lonely kid in the neighborhood. Nobody really messed with him. And, you know, once he robbed the banks, he started getting money. His gear got better. His jewelry got better. He got a whip. You know what I mean? He doing his thing, right? So now he winds up in prison, you know? And for the three bank robberies, they did what they call stack them. You, they stack them by the first bank robbery. You're looking at 20 years. The second bank robbery... Within a certain amount of time, you're looking at 40 years. And the third one, you're looking at 60 years. So Billy got sentenced to 60 years in federal prison for bank robbery, right, out west. I run into him, you know, over in the west coast. When I run into Billy, Billy was in there. You know me, I'm a fly dude. I'm always doing my thing. And, you know, I'm getting the tailor-made suits made in the prison, you know, because they sell like just standard gray sweatsuit, either dark gray or light gray. And I might get, you know, two sets of each, you know, color. And I give it to my man, Yousef from uh, Philly. Big round of applause to Yousef from Philly with the Yousef wear. You know what I mean? I got to show you some pictures of me in prison with the Yousef wear. Calm down. Calm down. Relax, relax, relax. I got to show y'all what a Yusef wear looked like. But he might make the three-quarter length jacket. Anything you see in a magazine, he could make. And when we got locked up, you know, back in 93, everybody was wearing like three-quarter length jackets. That was the official, you know, meaning you a gangster joint when you're wearing that. You know what I mean? Gangster. Let's get that right. So now I'm wearing this joint, right? So I'm up in the joint. I'm the flyer. Well, one of the flyers dudes in the joint. And then here comes Billy. Billy comes in. Billy people sending him money every day because he still got the money from the three bank robberies. So Billy going to the store. Billy playing tickets. Billy getting going to the store, man, running up debts. You know what I mean? Paying the debts off. He doing everything. You know what I mean? He, he, he Billy, Billy the man, you know, in the prison. But I'm sitting back and I'm watching Billy because I already know that Time reveals everyone, you know? So Billy just, every time somebody needed something, they went to Billy. Hey, Billy, you got a soup? You know, you know, you know what a butt naked soup is. I already told y'all about that. I got to bring the props for my new people. So, you know, he'll give him a little butt naked soup. It only costs 20 cents. So here go a dude coming over there asking him for a 20 cent soup. It ain't nothing. He got 150 soups in the sale at 20 cents a piece. So he's giving out the soups. So he'd be like, yo, Billy, you got a pack of Kool-Aid? They sell a box of Kool-Aid for, uh, you know, like a dollar forty for six in a pack, and you could put each one in an eight ounce water bottle and get an eight ounce, you know, water bottle full of Kool Aid. And you know, they got popcorn things like that. They saw in the uh, commissary that they sell in the, uh, you know, uh, they go in the microwave. So every night somebody went to me, yo Billy, you got a popcorn? Yo Billy, you got a soup? Yo Billy, you got a Kool Aid? Yo Yo Billy, you got a bag of rice? Yo Billy, you got a mackerel? And that ain't nothing to Billy, cause he got plenty of money coming in. He got about maybe 10, 15 grand on his books, and that's a lot. That's like that's what you call penitentiary rich. So Billy, penitentiary rich. Let me show you what penitentiary rich look like. Hold up, I I I I got some of my uh, penitentiary currency. This is penitentiary rich, so y'all understand. Each one of these books is worth five dollars. You know what I mean? You got 100 books, 200 books, you you, you good. You know what I mean? You got 1,000 books. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, you all right. You know, so you're doing your thing. So Billy getting money. 
So every time somebody came, Billy, you got two stamps, I can play a ticket. Billy give him two stamps. Whatever they want, Billy gives them. Billy gives them everything he wants. Billy's the nicest dude on the compound. And, you know, he a fly dude. He start going to Yusef. He getting his clothes wet. And he look like he in competition with me. But I'm sitting back and I'm laughing because, you know, when you're old gangster, you can see through the bull crap to see who's who. So Billy, you know, he's up there and he's in competition with me. And I'm just sitting back waiting for his demise to see how it's going to play out because I already know how penitentiary rules go. So, you know, from him being so nice and all that, he he, he just kept, get, get, you know, getting it, keep, keep getting it. You know what I mean? The, the money all is coming in, coming in. You know what I mean? He said the money all is coming in. He's spending it, you know, every, I mean, every night, 10, 15 dudes in his door. He giving away, let's say, you know, 10 soups. That's only $3 a night. But to a dude that don't have nothing, that's $3,000 a night. They're like, oh, this dude paid. So everybody run up on the Billy. Yo, Billy, what pay ticket you playing today? Yo, Billy, what you doing today? Yo, Billy, um, what you got on a such and such game? I think it'll be this. And they befriended him with that. And Billy loved the attention because he's not used to getting attention. He only got attention once he started robbing the banks on the street and he started doing what he got to do. But, you know, let, 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 let me take you for a ride. <laughs> Let me take you for a unique ride. So now we're going to take it back to the street. Billy was a little quiet dude in his town. Nobody paid him no mind. You know what I mean? And, you know, all the dudes out there, they play basketball. They good at it. Billy ain't athletic. You know what I mean? All the dudes, you know, they people's buying them clothes because Billy from the suburbs out there in the Midwest. So it's people buying them all the nicest clothes and Billy looking good, but nobody paying him no mind. No matter what he wore, nobody paying him no mind. If somebody else wore it, they'll get 100 compliments for the day. Billy wore it, nobody even seen him. It's like they looked through him. So... Once Billy decided to rob a bank, he stepped it up. Now he started wearing jewels, you know? So now he the man out there in his town. So, you know, he robbing banks and all that. So he robbing the bank here, robbing the bank there. He got away with a lot of them except for that one day he slipped up because he, when he went in the bank, they wound up, you know, um, had a camera, and the camera, you know, caught him, you know, from a good angle. The other joints never really caught him from a good angle. So Billy got away with it. But when he ran up in the bank, at the third bank, when he go up in there, the police is in there and the police is waiting on him because they mapped out where he going and how he going to rob the banks and things like that. So, you know, they got their little technique to say, OK, he robbed the bank here. He robbed the bank there. He robbed the bank here. So the next bank is going to be over here. And they want to pick in the next bank. So when they ran up in the joint, Billy had a standoff with him, you know. So when Billy had a standoff with him. He's sitting there. He holding hostages and everything. Now, I've never been in trouble a day in his life. So he got the gun. He not letting nobody leave. The hostage negotiation is out there. They tell him, oh, yo, let him out. What's your name? I'm going to call in. They call in on the phone. They talk to him. He said his name is Billy. He tell them that, you know, he got these hostages. And if they don't back up and let him out, this and that, you know. So they backed up. They let him out. And when they let him out, as soon as he got out and he got in the car, he started driving. They knew it was one way out to town because he out in the Midwest. So they put out, put down those little uh, spike strips and they, uh, you know, Billy go driving and he went up the road that they knew he was going to go down, drove over it, got a flat tire, got caught, wound up in prison. But like I said, when Billy was on prison, he got all his friends for being nice. I mean, when he's on the street, he got his all his friends for being nice. You know what I mean? They were just messing with Billy for what Billy had. You know what I mean? Now he goes to prison and he carries on the same behavior because that made him the man on the street. So now he in prison, he's giving everybody everything. The whole time he's doing that, you got a booty bandit watching him. You know, if you don't know what a booty bandit is, y'all look it up. But he got a booty bandit watching him, and he's like, man, you know, he's thinking to himself, man, this dude's soft. Because every time somebody wants something, the booty bandit, nobody gave him nothing. You know what I mean? Because they didn't respect the fact that he was on boys, you know? So nobody gave him nothing. So whenever he wanted something, he'd go to Billy. Billy gave it to him and always gave it to him. So now... He goes in there, and he rolls up on Billy, and Billy giving him everything. But then Billy Money runs out. When Billy Money run out, the, 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 the crowd, the entourage that was around him, it dwindled, you know? It let, like, maybe 10 people around him, because I'm talking about he had 10, 20 people, you know, easy. So now it dwindled down to five people, three people. There was one dude that generally liked Billy, you know? But the whole time, the booty bandit watching this move and see that nobody's messing with old Billy. So 
the booty bandit, you know, goes in the cell. He asks Billy, yo, you got a suit? You know, he gives him a suit. You know what I mean? He didn't have to give him the spill like he give everybody else. Normally, booty bandit would go on people's cell and he'd be like, because he's hungry. You know, he'd be like, yo, I messed up, man. Uh, you know, ain't nobody sending me nothing. I'm hungry as hell. You know, they serve pork tonight. I don't eat the pork. And, you know, that soy they serve, you know, it, 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 you know. You know the penitentiary soy. If y'all know what the penitentiary soy is, I'm going to explain it to you. They got what they call soy that they call that they say is supposed to be like you know the best food to eat. Y'all don't buy soy. Remember when soy was real big? So you know he was eating that soy, and you know he, he, you know you eat that soy, and your nipples start leaking, you know, um, milk. <laughs> like if you're pregnant, imagine a grown man. He's laying down. He wake up in the morning, and his t-shirt is wet. You know, big wet spot on his T-shirt, you know, because his nipples started leaking, you know, uh, you know, milk like if he was pregnant, you know. So nobody really messed with that. I think they put the, I think the soy, you know, they put something in it to, to make you sterile, you know, so you can't have no kids. That's a form of birth control for, you know, the Federal Bureau of Prison, right? They probably do it in the state too, but I'm talking about in the feds. So... Billy going and say, man, I ain't trying to eat that soy, man. You know, man, if you can give me something to eat, all I need is a soup. And don't feel sorry for him. Give it to him. Some dudes tell him, man, get up out of here. You a booty bandit. We don't mess with booty bandits. You know what? Because he knew not to even come to my cell. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I was stickly he cipher, monkey cipher phobic, you know? If y'all don't know what that is, you know, if you, somebody put in the comments so they know because, you know, this is YouTube. So, you know, I'm a he cipher, monkey cipher, uh, you know, phobic. So... Billy know not to even come to my cell, you know? And I looked out for everybody just as well, but, you know, at the same time, I kept my gangster face on. In prison, you can't smile too much. You can't sit there looking, hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? On the street, you do that because there's women around. But then when you're dealing with them people, you know, that's how that is. So you sit back and you got everybody watching you. So while they watching you, you know, you like, oh, man, what's going on? You know? And... You know, he goes to Billy, and Billy gives him everything. So as Billy is giving him everything, he's taking Billy for soft. You know, when Billy's not really soft, Billy's a good dude. That's all that is. He likes to make sure that, you know, everybody's happy because everybody's happy. They're smiling, and they're around him. But like I said, his money ran out. So this booty bandit rolls up in the cell on Billy, and when he rolls in the cell on Billy, he goes in the cell, and he tells Billy... You know, um, yo, could I get a soup and um, a pack of Kool-Aid, man? I, I, I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. So they give Billy the soup and a pack of Kool-Aid. Billy gets the soup and a pack of Kool-Aid. I mean, gives it to him. So he leaves, he go out, he watching, and he's sitting here thinking, and somebody else going to sell ads for something, he gives it to him. So here it is, you know what I mean? We fast forward it. We fast forward it. So here it is two, three days later, you know, uh, they had something went on. And Billy didn't get to make it to the commissary. He waiting to go Friday, and it was Thursday, you know. So the booty bandit go in his cell, and he asked him, yo, Billy, could I, could, I, could I get a soup, you know? And Billy like, nah, that's my last soup. Only got a soup and a Mac would left because, you know, I didn't get to make commissary because my money order came late. Captain said I'm going to be able to go tomorrow. So check me tomorrow, and I'll give you the soup. So dude said, man, yo, but Billy, I'm hungry, man. You know what I mean? I ain't eat nothing all day. You know, these dudes don't mess with me. Billy don't even know that he's a booty bandit, why nobody mess with him, because everybody's just around him for what he got. They're not really telling him what's going on in the prison because they're just using him. <laughs> you know what I mean? And let me give you the word use, you know? It's like everybody use somebody for something. You know what I mean? But that don't mean that it's a negative use, meaning, you know, like we got a pen pal. We meet a pen pal, right? You know, I'm riding, you know. <laughs> You know, we meet a pen pal. So we got a pen pal, and the pen pal reaches us, reach out to us in the prison because they had a little prison website. You know, I think of friends behind the wall, write a prisoner, you know, and they even had one called Pampered Prisoner, <laughs> you know? So now we writing people on there. We put an ad up. They writing us back. We hollering at them. And these are women that usually just broke up with a man, and they don't have anybody. They want a little attention, so they start writing the guys in jail. So they write the guys in jail, the dudes is writing them back, and, you know, it's a use-use thing. You know, some people say win-win, but I'm going to use the word use because it don't matter what title you put on it, it all fits in the same cipher, meaning see it 360 degrees in the same circle because nothing leaves. So you got the females, they looking for somebody to tell them something 
to make them look uh, feel good on the inside. Then you got the guys that's on the inside that just need something put on their commissary accounts. They go to store. So the females, you know, is you know writing them letters because they're lonely. Self-esteem might be low or whatever it is. And some generally care and just want to reach out to an inmate. But by the time they talk, start talking to the inmates and they see what's going on, they start realizing that, it, you know, uh, this is a cool dude. And the females fall in love. So that's where the U's U's come in. The females is using them to get the attention and the dudes is using them to get the commissary. But what you call that, you know, what, what, we, what we men call that is... You know, fair exchange is no robbery. I give you your self-esteem boost, you send me a money order. <laughs> you understand? So that's how that go. So now, you know, we in there and the booty bandit rolls up in the cell. And being that dude gave him his last thing, um, he rolls back in the cell, you know, that same night. You know, and he said, yo, Billy, I really appreciate you doing that, man. I was hungry, man. I feel much better. I thought I was going to die. They fed that. They fed that nasty-ass soil. You know, my nipples was leaking, you, you know, uh, 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 milk, so I had to fall back from it. So I've been real hungry, man. I appreciate you. And the booty bandit reached over and kissed Billy. You know what I mean? On the lips. You know, not not no tongue kissing, none, because Billy was not, you know, he cipher, monkey cipher. He just reached over after he told him, then told him thank you. He reached over and kissed Billy, you know. So Billy stood there and he looked back and he never had nothing like this go on with him before. He didn't have no attention on the street and didn't know nobody until he started robbing banks. So Billy didn't know how to react to it. So Billy just pulled back, you know what I mean? The booty bandit didn't even wait for a response. He just left. So when he left, he comes back in and then, uh, about two, three weeks later, nobody's messing with Billy. So his celly told him, yo, you know, my man just getting ready to get off the bus. So you're going to have to find another cell. You know what I mean? Because this is my cell. You know, so Billy don't want no problem. So Billy say, all right. So he leaves to go to another cell. You know, so when he goes to um, another cell, had nowhere to go. Um, the booty bandit tells him, you know, you can move in here, man, because you remember you gave me your last soup. I appreciate you. And they still never addressed the booty bandit kissing him. So they, you know, he, but he, it's, Billy don't know no better. So Billy moves in the cell with the booty bandit. So when he moves in the cell with the booty bandit, they in there, they up, they playing cards all night, you know, casino, tunk, and you know what I mean? They, they reading books to each other out loud and things like that. And while they reading these books, right, Billy, Billy was on the top bunk, the booty bandit on the bottom. So while Billy on the top bunk, the booty bandit down there while uh, Billy's reading these books, right, the booty bandit started having reading those. It's a book. That, I don't know if y'all know about it. I, I don't like to plug things when I'm not getting paid, but I'm just telling y'all the story. It's a book called uh, uh, um, Pet House Letters, where regular people write in, you know, their freak stories and sex stories, you know, to penthouse, and they print it. It usually be a page, two page, maybe a page and a half. And they tell a different experience that happened sexually. And all of us used to love to read them in prison. We ain't got no woman. We ain't got no nothing. So just to be able to read a woman, I, you know, some dudes used to like to, like to read the joints from anybody, mean a man or a woman, but I couldn't read the stories from a man. So as soon as I seen that the letter was from Bob Jones, you know what I mean? I flipped the page and looked for something that was from Susan Jones. So now I see, you know, Susan Jones. I, let me see what old freak Susan into. So Susan telling her little story, and I'm reading it, and you know what I mean? I, you know, tell my silly step out, put the sign up, and I pull out the, you know, letter from old Susan, and I get my pictures of the girls that I want. You know, make time to have to tell me I like to get females that I know so I can imagine really doing something with them on that type of level. But dudes would go and buy pictures. They sell pictures like this. Man, I hope they flag YouTube don't flag. Let me put my thumb over it or something so that you can see what I'm talking about. But, you know, just, you know, I like to give you all the joint. Let me put my finger over there. Oh, man, okay. It, it was like this. So you might have females like this on the bed. You know what I mean? And she's not wearing nothing but a thong, so you know what it is. So I'm I'm waving the pictures so that, you know, you two don't go and don't act up. But anyway, so, you know, when they get them pictures and they lay them out. But, you know, when you're a fly dude like me, you got females you know that will send you pictures of themselves like that. So you can picture you, you know, running up in them like that. You know what I mean? So you, you, hold on. Let me give the rat bastards and flip five women and public trolls three seconds to tap out before they start putting the comment, oh, you, you being a pervert. Uh, and you already know the deal.
take that with you on the way out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you know, that's how that used to work. So while Billy's sitting there, he reading the penthouse magazine. His man said, yo, man, this story crazy as hell. Here, here, read this story. So he gives it to Billy. Billy on the top, bonky hands in the book. Billy reading the story while he up there. He's sitting there, he's, you know, stroking his manhood. So while he's stroking his manhood, Billy's reading the story. Billy up top, so Billy don't know what's going on down bottom, you know? So... You know, Billy got to go to the bathroom. So Billy said, hold up, family. He jumps out the bed to go to the bathroom. When he jump out the bed to go take a piss and he start peeing and he turns around, he see dude butt naked, no covers on him, and he's sitting here stroking his manhood. Billy don't do nothing. Billy said, whoa, whoa. He said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Could you believe that? He said, excuse me. And he jumps up in the bed. Penitentiary rules dictate that you put the knife Oops, excuse me. Put the Bethel hand in him, as Bunky Pound would say, you know? But instead of, you know, Billy doing that, Billy never experienced nothing like that. So he jumped back in the bed and dude said, go ahead, finish reading the story. Billy, a little nervous and uncomfortable, but crazy ass Billy continues to read the story. You know what I mean? When he done seen that the dude is down there, you know, playing with himself while he reading the story, you know? So... After he doing that, then the dude turns around and the dude comes back to him and the dude, you know, gets up and he goes to the bathroom and he's butt naked. So while he's naked, he's urinating using the bathroom, but he's not with his back to Billy like, you know, we normally do when we're in the cell so a man don't see your genitals. He's standing at the side and he got his joint in his hand and he's stroking it and he's urinating and he's talking to Billy and telling Billy, yo, that was a good story, man. That Susan is a mother. Look if you see any more stories from Susan. So Billy's scamming through the book because he's uncomfortable and nervous and don't know what to do and this dude did something that we call he soft-pressed him. You know what I mean? I mean he act real nice to him to let him feel comfortable so Billy couldn't tell him no because he's not used to tell nobody no because he does everything to get people to talk to him. So being dude talking to him butt naked, you know what I mean? Stroking his manhood and he gonna tell him, yo, find another story for our Susan, man. Look up and thing. So Billy starts skimming through the pages. He finds another story and dude's standing up there and dude is urinating and Billy's reading the story. And as he's reading the story, he starts stroking. You know what I mean? Billy's sitting there and he's looking and he's uncomfortable. So he's looking at him. He's looking at the book, looking at him, looking at the book. And he's like, you know, so dude see him looking at him. So he think he's looking at him because he's attracted to him, but just don't know how to make a move. But Billy's looking because he couldn't believe he did this. Like, yo, I know he don't have his joint in his hand. This is what Billy's thinking. I know he don't have his joint in his hand, you know? So next thing you know, the police come around, they do the count. So after they do the count, you know, his man jumps out the bed. He goes down, because he was in the covers when the police came by. He jumps out the bed, and he goes down, and check this out, you know what I mean? He jumps out, and he turns the light off, and he quietly and politely gets in the bed with Billy. So Billy pushes him, like, yo, what are you doing? And dude says, shut up, you know you want it. And he's like, whoa, you know what I mean? So now, you know, they get locked up for, you know, police came back around because it was a miscount. You know, miscount meaning, you know, they know they got 120 inmates. They count 119 or 121. So it's a miscount, so they got to do it over. But by then, the booty bandit was already in the bed with Billy. So the police come by, and the lights is out, and he shines that thing, and he sees the two of them in the bed, and Billy's trying to push it on a ball for him. And Billy's not even punching him or fighting him. It's, you know, what's going on? So now, the police sees it. They said, you know, um, 302, I think 306, 306, 306. You know, that's like, you know, that's a charge they give you if you you know, having any kind of sexual act, whether it's with yourself or someone else. If you want to know some stories about the 306, you know, the 306, I think 305. The 305 is, and put in the comments and correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a minute. But the 305, I never had one of them charged. The 305 is, is the ones that, you know, that masturbated to women and things like that. You know, they say 305, 305. So yeah, they mean, that means it's a sexual act. So the police come running down there. They throw the law on, they run in there, and they lock them up, and they put them in a hole. You know? So then now, you know, about a week later, I'm on the compound, and I don't know what went on in the cell yet. You know, this is how I found out what went on in the cell. So I don't know what went on in the compound. So it's a dude that was acting like he was tough. You know what I mean? And, you know, kept gritting at me. So I said, hold up, let me go get my Bethel hand to make sure he ain't on nothing. So I get the Bethel hand and I'm going to the yard, you know, 
I mean, excuse me, I'm going to child hall. And you never take your Bethlehem to the child hall. Everybody knows you don't do nothing in the child hall. Because if you're doing child hall, it's the easiest way to get transferred. So I normally don't have my Bethlehem, but I'm going through the joint. And I'm, you know, and I take it to the child hall because I didn't like the way this dude was looking at me. Like, you know, he had an issue with me or something, you know. So I take the Bethlehem. I go up there. I go through the metal detector. It was a floater. A floater is something made out of plastic or aluminum that's not going to ring in the metal detector. So you, you call it a floater because it floats through the metal detector. Cash app is on the screen. See, I give you all these jewels. I don't care if it's a dollar, two dollars, whatever, but at least give me a subscription. Make sure you hit the notification bell, or at least at the very least, give me an emoji and just put, you uh, you know, Mecca Fire. You know what I mean? Put Mecca Fire in, in, in the emoji, you know, if you ain't got a cash app. So now, you know, I'm coming out the kitchen and the police get to search me and there was this he cipher, monkey cipher, you know, officer that was there. And, you know, it was so crazy. I see, you see the heat cipher, monkey ciphers back then, they, they had correction officers like that. And, you know, that's when uh, Bill Clinton signed in the don't ask, don't tell. So the don't ask, don't tell is where, you know, in uh, government services, you don't ask their sexual orientation and they won't tell you their sexual, you know, they don't have to tell it to you. You know what I mean? So cause they used to ask if you this, you that, you had to tell them. So they had the don't ask, don't tell. So they brought a lot of he cipher, monkey ciphers in. So while they in there, you had certain them ones that was there. And I'm going to tell you one, right? And this is funny. I, 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 I got to admit, this is funny. Now... It was a dude, I, you know, because I like to ride. <laughs> Let me tell you about ADX. When we went to ADX, we were on the step down. We coming out and, you know what I mean, they pat you down and get you used to going through, you know, the regular penitentiary because they pat you down sometimes kind of crazy and you act up. So they got to teach us how, you know, to work our way back in the regular United States penitentiaries from the ADX Supermax after we've been locked down and away from people for so long. So we coming out the thing and they got about 20 police out there and you walk by and literally every police give you a pat down. Some just go, you know, pat you in your shoulders down to your waist and tell you to go. Some pat you all the way down to your ankle. You know what I mean? But if this one dude that'll pat you down and he'll take his hand and he'll put it up in your crotch. You know what I mean? And like, you know, when he pulls up your crotch so hard, it's like you get a wedgie and, and, you, and, and you know, you jump like, ooh, and you're like, yo, what the? You know, so now you turn around and tell the police, yo, what's up with this dude? Now they say, okay, so he ain't going to be able to handle USP, you know? So now they give him a shot, you know what I mean? For, you know, insolence, whatever, because he don't cuss out, you know, the he cipher, monkey cipher, you know, CO because he don't put his joint all up in there and touch his genitals as he rightfully should have. But now they know that he's not really ready to go. So it was one time when we was coming out of the joint, they took this little dude. It was a little dude from, I think, Mississippi. Good old man. Cold, 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 cold gangster. You know, but he was real quiet, didn't bother nobody, he had a full bed. He was only about maybe five, four, and maybe 110 pounds. But the, he comes out there, and, he, and, he used to, and he's an older man, so he used to always wear his pants when y'all call now fitted. That's why I, I don't like to see y'all with your pants hanging off and, you know, the, uh, the flip-flops in public and all of that. But his pants was always tight, so the police must have figured that he cipher, monkey cipher. But what it was, he just felt comfortable in the tight pants, a.k.a. fitted pants. So he comes out to join in, he cipher, monkey cipher, go and he pats him down and he goes and he grabs him by his waist and go down to pat him you know what I mean and like I said remember where the he cyber monkey side with that and hit the dude in between the middle of his leg so when he goes down like that he grabs the dude from uh Memphis you know what I mean that's what we're from Memphis so he grabbed him, or Mississippi whatever I always got those confused when I was locked up because those are two places I never went so they grabbed him by his cheeks and they pushed his cheeks together. He was really getting a feel off. You know what I mean? Getting the freak on. So now we see it. And you know me. I'm old clown. So I start laughing. I said, yo, Memphis, he put your joints. He put your cheeks together like they was a set of lips. You know what I mean? Like he was telling your cheeks to pucker up. So Memphis looked back at me and he's so pissed. But see, Memphis was a gangster, like I said. So instead of Memphis getting mad at what I said, he got mad at the rightful culprit, which was the person that put his cheeks together like they was a set of lips. So what Memphis do is, you know, Memphis turn around and he punches them dead in the face. Boop. So Memphis get locked up. Like I said, you know, so that's how the he cyber monkey cyber slip in. So now, you know, dude is sitting there. So, you know, because I'm riding. <laughs> you know, because I'm riding. So now I come out the mess hall and dude went to search me down and I had the joint on a string on my sweatpants and I had it hanging right over my privates. So when I come out, you know, dude came and he went to touch my privates. 
So when he went to touch my privates, I backed up. I said, yo, what you doing? And they said, no, 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 you, you know, he just doing a strip search. I said, nah, man, I ain't going for none of that. That man going for my privates. And they said, nah, we got to strip search you. We got to search you. And I said, nah, I'm not going for that. So they said, okay, well, if you don't let us, you know, give a pet search, we got to give you a strip search. So now I got to gamble with a strip search because I know I got my joint on me and they want to feel up by my privates. So I tell them, nah, man, you know, I take a strip search. So while we go in there, I figured I could get to the, you know, the dry tank is what they call it. They call it the holding tank. I, but I think I get to the holding tank, and when I get to the holding tank, you know what I mean? I could always try and take the drone off the string on my thing and put it down on the side of the cell. You know what I mean? And, you know, hope something is in the cell that I could put over it or I could just take my shirt off, throw my shirt over it, and then let them come over there because they want to see if I got anything on them. So I go in the cell and I... Take the joint off me real quick. I put it on the floor. I take my sweatshirt. I throw it over the, you know, Bethlehem. And the police come in. They patch search. I mean, they uh, tell me to strip search. They stand at the door. So I take everything off because I had a T-shirt on still. So I take off my T-shirt. Take out, yeah, yeah, this, this is how they degrade you in prison. So if you youngins want to go to prison and go through this, you go ahead. So he sat there and I took my T-shirt off, took my pants off, and then I had to take my boxes off. Now the man looking at me in my birthday suit. Then he tell me to turn around, bend over, and cough. But, you know, I'm not. I said, nah, hold on. I'm not doing no bend over and cough. You can see what I got now. So what do you mean talking about bend over and cough? And he's like, I said, I'm giving you a direct order. So when they say they give you a direct order, that means if you don't do it, they're going to give you a shot. So I said, nah, I'm going to take the shot. You know what I mean? So he said, all right, and he walks out. But I'd rather take the shot for refusing to direct the order because that's like a 300 series. You know what I mean? Refusing the order. Because I got the Bethlehem on the ground. That's a 100 series shot that was going to take 28 days good time, even though I had life plus 20 with no chance of parole. But that's an automatic 30 to 60 days in a hole, depending if you're first or second. And I already got caught with four knives behind the clock in Lewisburg. And so this is my second knife shot. So I couldn't stand that because that was 60 days in the shoe. And they trying to be out on the compound doing the to do so you know he leaves and he come back he brings me a shot so when he brings me the shot you know uh i get the shot so he said all right somebody coming to take it to the shoe i said to the shoe for three on series he said yeah because you wouldn't let him search you out there so there's one refusing an order then you came back here and you wouldn't bend over one cough there's two refusing an order so if you get two of the same shots at one time or within 30 days you automatically got to go to shoe and you automatically got to see the dho I said all right well whatever so now when they go and they come I pick up my sweatshirt with the Bethel hand in it, and I grab it in my hand. I got my shirt hanging, so they tell me, turn around and cuff them. So I'm holding the sweatshirt, so I turn around, and I put my hand, you got to put your hands behind you with, your, with the backs of your hand together. That's so they know you can't swing, so they don't let you put it to the front, because you can just turn around and, boop, you know, do what you got to do. So I'm holding the joint, so they cuff me, and they take me to the shoe, and I got the Bethel hand with me in the shoe. I'm in the shoe, and I'm next door to this booty bandit. You know what I mean? And being that they got me next door to the booty bandit, you know, it was somewhere they was trying to, uh, you know, I don't know what they was trying to do. But I'm talking to the booty bandit in the vent, and I hear him talking to everybody. And I said, yo, why you do that to homie? Homie looks out for you. He gives everybody everything. That man don't bother nobody, and you know he's not a he cipher, monkey cipher. He said, yo, that dude is a biatch. And I said, what? He said, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. I said, why you say that? He said, man, every time anybody come to him, he giving them everything. The nigga too nice. Anybody too nice is a sucker. And this was his mentality. So he said, anybody too nice is a sucker. You know, he said, and then, you know, I got him in there reading me Penthouse magazine by Susan, such and such. And, you know, he jump out the bed to use the bathroom. He see me down there butt naked, no covers on me, my birthday suit. I'm stroking my joint. He don't say nothing. Then I jump down, go to the bathroom. And when I go to the bathroom, he's sitting there and, you know, I face him, got my joint looking right at him, both my eyes and my third lower eye. You know what I mean? And this dude is reading a story to me while I'm stroking my joint using a bathroom. You can't tell me he's not a he cipher, monkey cipher. I said, nah, he might just have been nervous. He said, well, if he was that nervous, he need to give it up. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, because leaders to say, I didn't want to get into it for YouTube purposes, but, you know, dude had already, you know, awed him in the cell. You understand what I'm saying? And the police caught, came and caught him while he was trying to push him off him or whatever. I guess after dude done released himself, felt a little weak. He went to push him off and police shines a light on him. So now he said, yeah, he did all that. So I know he's soft. You know, so this is what the dude is telling me. You know, I said, so what was the reason for you thinking that he was he cipher, monkey cipher, when no one else even picked that up? You know what I mean? And he said, nah, to be honest, he ain't no he cipher, monkey cipher, because he squirmed all the time and... You know, 
uh, 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 I, released my, I released myself so quick, I know that he wasn't. He's like, I said, what? I said, oh, 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 all right, I'm done. So I get off the vent. I don't want to hear no more of this crap. You know what I mean? So the next day we go to the wreck. So when we go to the wreck, he talking to another he cipher, monkey cipher, and they already told him he leaving. So now he telling the other he cipher, monkey cipher, booty bandit with him, said, yo, dude, such, 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 that I came in here with, I'm telling you that that dude sweet to do this, to do that. So, you know what I mean? You can get him. So now everybody is targeting this Nice dude. You understand what I'm saying? Now, mind you, it all started from him being on the street wanting attention. So he go rob a couple of banks, buy some jewelry, buy some clothes. He start looking out for everybody in the town. And now he got a lot of friends. He go to the prison. He picks up the same thing and he do the same thing. Could you believe that? Now he winds up in prison. He do it, but in prison it's a whole different ball game because people take it kindness for weakness. He was being too kind, so they took it for weakness. I'm talking fast. I want to speed this up because I want y'all to get to the point. And... Y'all can slow it down if the words are coming out of my mouth a little bit too fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he told that to the, you know, the other booty bandits and they on the gate. And the whole time we listening, you know, us straight men is listening. And we like, yo, I can't believe this stuff. Like, you know, I we never even phantom nothing like this was going on. And dude talking all loud, talking like, yeah, I grabbed him. And when I went to choke him out, he acted like he pushing me off. But I know he wanted it and da 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 And it's the way a man is talking about another man. But bottom line is... Billy lost his manhood for being too nice. Cop the book of Rowan Harlem. Like the video, subscribe, and do what you got to do, because it is what it is. I Cheers. 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 The crime. Cheers. The crime. Cheers. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. The crime. Hey. Shot the can of 26 yeah. He back on the strip uh -huh. Getting back in the mix yeah. What he mentions a gift Trust. You stand up ten toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Real. Take a little gully posse and put it in home uh -huh. He cut from the bottom Back. Came up from the bottom Back. Drop the book, you should go and get it go An get Instagram it. page and a YouTube You could go and visit yeah. Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn Real. Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin uh -huh. How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it uh -huh. Did not pay attention would be stupid it's Talking about the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a roaring uptown. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.